It's LP time. Got Brandon Hughes with me tonight. We're going to talk some Libertarian Party local level stuff. I'm sure we'll make some jokes about Biden and Trump and all that kind of stuff too because that's the world we live in. But I'm going to try to keep, try to keep it on hand and see what we've got going on locally, what the LP is trying to do here in East Tennessee, um, and maybe some of the processes and how one can get involved with the Libertarian Party if they so desire. And then the burning question of how does a wrestler mayor be a libertarian and a Republican at the same time. But we'll get into all that stuff and more. Um, we're almost in agreement, almost in agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, I'm sure we'll get some uh, links and stuff from Brandon as we get going, and I'll put those in the show notes so you guys can reach out to the Libertarian Party if you so choose. So um, I put us on Facebook Live, but I don't know. It's not seeming to come through right, so I might kill that because it's going to mess with my internet. So... Anyway, it's uh, the 23rd of January, 2021. There's a new president in office. The world has not ended yet. And I think that's a good place to start. So, we're almost in agreement. Here we go. Brandon, buddy, my good sir, how are you? Hello, doing well, thank that, you. That is me, overly excited intro for probably what, I like, I just burned all the energy I have out, so it's going to be way low-key from here on out, so... Um, <laughs> Okay, I, don't, I mean, I don't know, like, um, you know, like, I often argue on the show as a libertarian, um, I feel, um, I feel like most of the core principles of libertarianism kind of s- sits right with me. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, side note, I killed the live stream, it's not gonna, it's not worth looking at me for an hour and a half for people watching on Facebook, so get that out of the way. Um, but anyway, um, I feel like base core principles, I'm, I'm, I'm more libertarian than any of the other parties at play. Um, I am not a dues paying member. Um, and the more I've gotten into politics, the more I'm probably not going to be a dues paying member because by actively participating in a party, you're handicapping yourself for future things. If you don't go with that exact party and no offense to libertarians, it doesn't really, it's not a leg up being a libertarian in any of the party games. So all that intro for, um, I don't know. Where do you want to start? What do you want to talk about? What's new in the LP world of East Tennessee? I guess a good one would be like, what's the, how's the structure work here? Because I've had Matt Shears and Randy Pace, and those are the county chairs for the respective big boy parties, for lack of a better word. That's not, a, I don't, I, I need to say it more derogatory than that. What's a good derogatory universal term for both parties? Uh, just the duopoly. The duopoly. Okay. So um, <laughs> I've had the local duopoly party chairs in. Um, but the LP does not have a county chair. It has a regional chair. Is that correct? Uh, well, I mean, that's no, I mean, we have state and then counties. Okay. Um, and then the, like the, we have, we have an, uh, an associated 10 county group that we call the ETNLP East Tennessee. Okay. And, so you're, t- you're, you're not, you are the Knox County chair or you're the ETL yeah, just Knox. Just okay, Knox you're County just Knox County. Okay, see, I learned something. That's what's important here. Um, yeah. All right, so, I mean, I don't know. I like I'm I, regardless of libertarianism or not. I'm a big. I'm a strong ag, 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 ag activist on the premise that this two party system sucks, and it's not in your and my and general public's best interest to continue going down this path. Um, you know, and one of the simple things to pitch a fit about is the way trying to get further parties into the officially on ballots and stuff. And that's a big problem and stuff like that. But like, what is the, like, um, what are some of the things that are going on in Knox County that the LP is pushing currently? Okay. So let's see. We are kind of, uh, not as a corporate entity, but all of our members, uh, pretty much we've been volunteering and, uh, forming an alliance and working with, uh, one of your previous guests, Eric Wider, uh-huh. and that, uh, what was it? The campaign for Liberty East Tennessee. And let's see who else with, the uh, yeah, the Nats. Yeah. The anti right, against yeah, yeah. the stadiums and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's one thing local. Um, and then let's see course we're really supportive of, sm- of small businesses um they're struggling with with a lot of these mandates for what time they can open and close and how, you know their occupancy and so you know if you're not working from home and you depend on that walk-in traffic it's it's a it's been a game-changing paradigm 
Well, and what's re- what's really fun, and I get to be an asshole, but I am, so I deal with it. Um, you know, I I resent the fact that I've fallen under the essential category the whole time. Like it pisses me off. Like I've got friends of mine that have been that were laid off and got made almost twice as much as me this year in unemployment than I made working throughout this whole thing. Uh-huh. And it's like, come on now, let's okay. I get it. Force people out of work. It sucks. It's a pain in the ass. You know. I, and you know, even the libertarian in you says, "Okay, well, if the government's the one taking your job away, then the government should support you while they take your job away until your job can come back." That makes sense to me. But this, like, because there's two parts of me personally. I have I have a day job, and I was essential in the day job, and then I own a business with a buddy of mine. Um, both fell under the essential category, and we actually hired a, a bunch of people that were non-essential to come work for us during the first stretch of it. Until for those for certain people, especially servers and bartenders who had a hard time getting the unemployment, like other people did um and so uh i mean i've kind of i've kind of come out th- through this uh oh you're in the you're in the private jet right now nice yeah i thought i had it turned on and oh it's all good there we go the, the, the walk picture was fantastic but um <laughs> the um um i lost my train of thought oh it was just i mean and, and so like just somehow I, and i don't know if it's actually a positive result of the pandemic to me personally and my business is we actually jumped in sales and we couldn't hire to save our lives like we were out begging people to come to work and like nah i make like twice that much on my unemployment right now why would i bother working and so that was one of the fun little unexpected side effects of the pandemic and the response to it um and so i don't know like i okay so i guess to be to free myself up to you and who I am and how I feel about libertarianism and stuff like that. I'm a big Dave Smith fan. Um, uh, that's one of my regular podcasts I listen to. Um, and so I kind of tend towards the, the, uh, the Mises caucus kind of premises. I'm not that into oh. the structures of the caucuses and the way those work within the party. Um, but I like the way Dave, at least his show works. Um, I've heard complaints from other people in the party that don't like dealing with Mises caucus people they tend to be kind of assholes in person, um, which I'm not a big fan of people being assholes for no good reason. But I, I think one of the things about Dave Smith's approach and, and maybe um, the, the, that Mises caucus kind of side of it that I do like, and I do think is accurate is I think one of the problems that any third party has is breaking that threshold of attention for people. For, for non-party people, for people that are kind of outside, that are used to being, well, I'm more or less a Republican, but there's some things I don't like and kind of like that. And, you know, there's that standard third parties are aliens, you know, like <laughs> that's just how we were, that's how we were all raised. I mean, anybody, you know, we, we survived Nader and um, Ross Perot and Ross stuff Perot. like that. But like, you know, any real third party we ever hear about traditionally, one, before you get deep into it, like like you and I probably are, um, it's very alien to people. And so they don't understand the base principles. Um, and I think one of the things that, that Dave Smith does well that I enjoy is that he, he takes the, he takes the very simplistic approach of here's the principle, here's how to apply. Um, and again, I guess the thing that people don't like about him, it's like, well, well, I've, I've explained it to as best as I can. So fuck you if you don't get it. And that's kind of his approach. And I, I, I can understand how, if, especially in the party that could rub the wrong way, cause I'm presuming we all have a general same goal. It's just, to me, I think one of the things that the third parties lack is, and I hate to say it this way, but it's like the flash, the, the something that grabs the attention. Cause I think the only thing the LP grabs attention in, and this is where I don't like Dave Smith is the full anarcho capitalist part of the party. That's mm-hmm. like, you know, all government is bad, burn the whole thing down. And that I don't think is good for the party either. And so I, I'm trying to get into understanding, you know, um, some of the nuance within the party to try to figure out like how to, cause I think the, the, the base, again, it's easy for me because I feel like I fall into it, but the base principles are easy. They're easy and they're logical. And it's just like, Hey, you're, you're an adult. I'm an adult. I can make decisions. You can make decisions. It's that easy, but somehow it's not. And that's what, that's what frustrates me. Cause it's, it's like, um, I don't know how to describe it other than like, it's just like it, it, it sits right in my brain. So it feels it's impossible to explain it in a way to somebody who can't. And I, that's what I think we lack as a party. And I, I don't mean to say we, cause I'm not a dues paying member, but I am going to say we, because I feel like I'm more libertarian than anything else. So help me out. Help me, help me figure out the proper sales pitch 
to, to get over some of that alienness of a third party when I'm talking to people. Right. Okay. Uh, the, some of the, some of the best examples when I've asked that question in our own, uh, circles is start with a story because people, you know, you need, you need a, something that resonates, that's, that, you know, hits somebody in the fields, you know, hits them where they live. You know, what, you know, let's focus more on raising awareness of and, and focus of the issues and the solutions. Um, you know, I, I started reading, uh, you know, economists and I started reading uh, Elon Musk. I started reading about, uh, you know, don't hurt people, don't take their stuff by Matt Kibb and, and or, or, you know, the revolution by Ron Paul. Right. And it, there were all, all the big progress forward started with a good story. And, you know, pe- pe- people kind of circle and champion around uh, a hero or, or, or someone, you know, maybe it's that, uh, like, we go to movies. You know, we love mu- musics or, or movies that, that have that, a message with a theme, you know, about, about overcoming some great uh, challenge. Right. And so people want to know how can you how can you help me with my one issue? You know, I go to the voting booth. You know, Joe Joe on the street goes to the voting booth uh, once or twice, or you know, once a year, or every two years, or every four years, and they have like one or two issues that that really matter to them. And so the LP, I know for Tennessee. Tennessee's Libertarian Party as an organization um, is trying to focus more on the issues and both raising good legislation and getting that passed or, or, you know, repealing the bad legislation. Right. Because we, you know, we won't, we want, we want freedoms, of course, but we also need some accountability and responsibility, and right. we have to, we have to lead with that because we can't expect our legislators to do it if we're not in our own right. personal lives. And I think that's one of the things that that's probably the best, the, the 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 a good point right there to me. And this is what I struggle with most because I argue with friends. Um, if you've listened to the main show with when I have the full standard crew on here, um, you know it's a it's a pretty solid Republican that leans libertarian and two Democrats for you know they won't say it. But they're uh, one more than the other is that he. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, and it's like there's this there's this thing. And I think it's normal for people. I think it's a normal evolutionary. It's it's ingrained in us in, in the chorus level. Um, and I can't remember who said it, but it's like, you know, um, you're always the hero in your own story. Like in your head, you're the hero of your own story. And somewhere in that same premise is that other out there the 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 blind masses the you know it's easy like for here in knoxville you know like somebody from you know birmingham alabama is just not as smart as me they're not as trustworthy as me that kind of premise that i think is natural in people that i think is one of the things that the lp needs to try to figure out how to um clarify to people it's like look you're just as smart as the guy down the street or across the country they're just as smart as you if you're capable of being responsible for yourself then so are they. And so, cause I think one of the big things that, that, that libertarianism fails on mostly is that we stand on the idea that we're adults and we're individuals and we, we have the, the, the autonomy to make our own decisions, but somewhere in that same thing, we have that autonomy, but we don't feel like they do, whoever they is, whoever that is over there is. And we can't, we as a species can't figure out how to justify that thought. And I think libertarians are the only ones that make that leap and say, yeah, um, Bill from Oakland and, and uh, Jennifer from uh, New York City and Stephen from Kansas City are all just as capable grown adults as I am. Because somehow, I think most people have this diminished view of outside, and that those people can't be trusted. It's I mean the pandemic's a perfect example, especially here in Knoxville with the Board of Health craziness. Is that is that you can't be trusted? Whoever's speaking is is basically saying that 
you, the masses of Knox County, cannot be trusted with the information that we give you. We can't just give you the information and trust that you're going to do the right thing. We have to mandate those things because you're incapable of that thing. And that general idea, I don't know, I like, because that's where I get the most frustrated when I get in conversations about libertarianism to people is that it's always like, well, who do you owe? You don't trust that guy over there to make the right decision about wearing a mask or not. Well, who do you trust? Who is a person that's capable of your trust? Do you trust yourself to make that decision? Yes. Well, then why don't you trust them? Well, because they have a proven track record river. Well, so do you. <laughs> Which one's the right one? I don't know either. So let me assume that most people are more like you and trustworthy and capable instead of assuming that they're not. And that's where I get really frustrated with it because I don't know how to bridge that and, and get people to see that, that they're basically automatically looking at stupid. The other people are stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah. And, 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 you know, I think the, the, um, like you've said in there, it's the, 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 the book you, you mentioned, um, you know, don't hurt people and don't pick people's stuff. Um, you know, which is, a, you know, it's the non-aggression principle, you know, in, in, in longer verbiage, I guess. But, um, I guess maybe there, cause again, I, I mean, I would assume that most of our listeners, which we don't have a huge audience, but most of our listeners are fairly, um, versed in libertarianism, at least my version of it. But, um, Maybe that'd be a good start. Like, um, you know, because to me, there's two. It's the non-aggression principle and, um, oh, I just blanked out on the other one. Um, at least in Dave Smith's version, it's the non-aggression principle is really all that matters. Private property. That's, those are the two. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the two base core principles. It's it's what the non-aggression principle is. You are more than permitted to use violence in defense, but you are not allowed to initiate said violence on any level that's the non-aggression principle and then private property is an is adjacent to that in the in that it is my property it is it, it is my property to defend and not use my property to transgress against each other um but what are some of the key points that the libertarian party is using right now to kind of broaden that to a more palatable normal public basis right okay so <clears throat> one thing I, i'll just touch on it though because it, it came out like a week ago. Um, a new a new thing. I don't I don't want to take thunder out of uh, Justin Cornett and uh, Josh Eckel, but they they put together this excellent uh, website and uh, a new. It's a five hundred one c four, I think it is. The Tennessee now now Tennessee. What's it called? Let's see for for all Tennessee. For all Tennessee, yeah. Yeah all tn.org right which i saw I, I i guess i follow i don't know if i follow it or i follow him on facebook um you know they're working on and this is what he talked about when he was came on the show a while back mm -hmm. um you know uh the civil effort for sure is a big one yeah um and i don't know if that stat's true but if that chart i saw is correct and that that police departments are taking are stealing more property than criminals are stealing property at this point that's pretty fucked up um yeah and, and the, the crim criminal justice reform, there's, there's so many, so many ways to imp improve that system. You know, like like the the bonds. Um, you know, we have to pay a bond to to even go to court and and, and get your <laughs> improve your innocence and you know right. remit your your property. Right, and you have to um, yeah, the the cash bail is a problem. Um, yep. You know, if the law if the law is innocent until pro proven guilty, why do we got to sit in jail until you prove it? Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of what else that I know is going on. Um, I thought it interesting that uh, um, Becky Massey is my state senator, uh, maybe yours as well. Yeah. Um, apparently, she co-sponsored this drone bill, which is interesting. I was yeah, reading up yeah. on that. Um, I've got her scheduled for late February. I might try to push it up after that one. Um, I don't know when the next voting session is. I'm see. That's one of the things that I get lost on personally. Um, in trying to interact with politicians, I don't understand the schedule, you know, like they do stuff and then they don't do stuff and they do stuff. And then it's like, you know, cause like the baseball stadium thing, let's go to full local. Um, like I'm pushing really hard to get everybody I can to talk about this baseball stadium thing, because in my recollection of things like this happening in the past, it's always rumor, 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 rumor vote. And we're going. And it's like, hold on, yeah. where did, where, when, when did the public conversation happen? I'm, I'm missing it. Like, I think it's cool. I think one of the coolest things that I'd like to see on other levels, I think um, the Knox County Commission um, two-vote rule, I think is a really cool rule. Um, 
that as I'm understanding how the commission works a little better, I think that's a fantastic thing where, you know, this Board of Health one, they voted on it back in December and it was passed in December and they have to vote on it and pass it again. And so anything that the commission does, they have to do that system. So the baseball stadium will be under that when and if it comes up. But I just feel I'm just I'm just scared to death that uh, like going back to the drone thing with Massey is that I'm going to miss all the conversation point and it's going to be talking about it in past tense instead of in future tense. And that's always my yeah. fear when I'm when I'm talking to politicians is that, that I'm going to end up talking about, well, how did that happen? Not what is happening. Right. Uh, the first the first hint about this bill was um, like a couple of years ago when, you know, like drone hobbyists uh, were wrestling with the FAA, you know, asking for some, uh, uh, what's that called? You know, to, to change the scope to, to, you know, allow, allow us, um, you know, more, more leniency on how we operate these aircraft, you know, in, in certain kinds of space and around neighborhoods or over public events. And so, we had some wins there and then right i mean just a a month after that um you know law enforcement agencies start you know they use that as a precedence they're like well the people are wanting all these extra you know freedoms and well let's 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 start with crowds of a hundred you know and it was like oh it's just for emergencies oh it's just for you know, we're going to monitor things. And if, if, you know, at first they only had three days um, to have, you know, the judicial part of the process um, sign off on, okay, this, this can be evidence. You know, you, you, you gathered evidence with, with the drone over a public event or during a crime. But now they're rolling it into Right, the, the it's SB O two five eight. Yeah, they're adding uh, they're to retain it for thirty days. They can hold footage for thirty days to find. And now they don't need a warrant to find use for it and do so without a warrant. Um, yeah, I, I guess I mean you know, and this is one of me not understanding legalese among many other things is one of the first questions I have on this one, and I will ask. I'll, I mean, I'm going to ask. I'm going to email her and ask her directly. Um, is is this over public or private land? Like, can they fly it over my house? Cause that's one of the questions like, you know, cause there's a, it's always a joke, but you know, um, it's actually becoming closer to reality. If it's not already happening in certain places that Amazon's going to start doing drone deliveries, which mm-hmm. is kind of a cool thing, I guess. But you know, like how much airspace do I own if I own a house? Exactly. You know, do you know if that, if, if, if it's, if it is, is my roof line or is it 10 <laughs> feet above my roof line? Or is it a hundred feet above my roofline? What's the rule on that? Or, or I have a tree that's forty feet tall. Is that my? You know, what is the, what are the rules on on what is mine on my property? Because you know, some sort of airspace is my property. Yeah. But I don't know what that is, and that's one of the questions I would like to know. And and again, you know, can they fly a drone over the street in front of my house, but not over my land? but look onto my land from there. And it's like, you know, I get where it gets really, really dicey in, in, in the specifics. Cause it's like, you know, it's, if it's on, if it's a cop driving down the street, he has the right to look. And if he yeah. sees something that is, uh, of imminent, what's the word? I, again, legally sucks that, you know, if he sees something <laughs> that, if he sees the thing that gives him permission, uh, to come onto, onto the property, he can do so. But can he yeah. be sitting out in his cruiser, on the street, find the drone straight above his head and looking into my backyard where me and some buddies are smoking dope or whatever stupid illegal, not shouldn't be illegal, illegal thing is or whatever, you know, that's where it gets, that's where it gets dicey to me. Um, and I don't know the right answer to it. And, and again, I think the libertarian stance is that if we don't know the right answer, let's lean on the less, not more for the state. Yeah. At least restrictive. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to, that, that, that one, I do have some questions about for, for Becky for, for sure, especially since she's apparently <laughs> an author or a co-author or a co-sponsor. Or she's high on the list of, or she introduced it. So uh-huh. I, I'm curious who wrote that for, her. I guess, uh, state or County law. One of the, one of the police departments, some of the law enforcement wrote that for her 
or maybe a drone lobby group. Right. Okay, and so I know the other one that's a big one is ballot access. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and I had Chris Davis, the Knox County Election Commissioner, in here, and he walked me through on the show what the process is. And um, what really bothered me about that, about the, talking to Chris Davis and Josh Eagle, for that matter, Eagle, 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 um, yep. is um, what really, really bothers me, especially because I'm in District 18 here in Knoxville. So I went through the whole Eddie Manish, um, uh, Oster, Gina Oster debacle. Yep. Um, and I, I paid close attention to that because it was very interesting and very good content for the show. Um, and um, talking to Josh and talking to Chris Davis and the election commission and watching the Oster Manis debacle unfold, that is our money. We pay for that as taxpayers. And I know, especially because I sat through, I actually got a press pass to sit in on um, the uh, state executive, the GOP state executive meeting on whether they, what they were going to do with the Manis Oster situation. And there was a whole bunch of conversation. It's like, okay, well, I think we have to deal with what we have in front of us and let Manis keep the keep the ballot spot, but we need to close these ballots. Um, and it's like, okay, I get it, I guess. Um, you know, because one of the things that I didn't understand, and I still don't, I mean, I do understand, but I don't really think it's a logical thing, is that um, primaries are not elections. And I don't think people understand that in general. They're not elections. They are a... Um, public, it's public input on a party issue. The party has no obligation to respect whatever the public says on it. It's just a way for the party to gauge the public's interest on a situation. It was well within their rights to take it away from, from Manus and give it to Oster the way it's set up. But you and I as taxpayers pay for the election commission to handle all that bullshit. And that bothers me because I'm not part of the party. I'm not part of the other party either. And if they close ballots, I have no input on this game. Um, and so I know we're trying for ballot access for the LP. I think one of the, I, and I, I think maybe the right, one thing that'd be an interesting tactic, and I don't know if this is a state level or a local level thing is how many other parties do we have in Knoxville that are functional? Uh, that's it. There's yeah, not, not in the County level. Nope. Um, how about state? Do we have a state socialist party or a state green party or anything like that? I think the yeah, the green and the, I'm not sure if the constitution party. Oh, we got the Patriot party coming up. Wait for that one. Anyway, yeah. sorry, bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it would be, I, I think it would be in, uh, in the LP's best interest to form a coalition with any other third party out there to push the ballot access conversation. Yeah, we did um, work with the Green Party a little while. Um, I think, I, I think as as a whole, I think it's, I think it's, you know, as 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 um, as hu as insanely different as a as most other third parties are from the LP in principle. It's still in everybody's best interest to get more parties on the, to get more people at the at the table. Um, and so that's where that's that's the pragmatic part of me. It's like we've got to figure out. Um, how to get more parties, even if they're not, even if it's not the LP. We, if we have a green party that's actually legitimately on ballots and all that kind of crap and gets to play the game the same way everybody else gets to play, play the game, gets debates, not that local has any debates, um, <laughs> which we should. And I'm going to try, that's one of the things I, I wish I had done this last election cycle. Like everybody was like, no, we can't do a debate. It's like, sure, we can do a debate. Nobody, nobody, there's no law about who's allowed to host a debate or not. I'll host a debate. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to try that here next uh, here in the city cycle coming up in 22, um, which again that's not a it's a nonpartisan so it's a little bit of a different animal, but um, I don't know I guess that rolls into the next kind of topic is what do we what what does the LP have brewing coming up um, in uh, candidates coming up through anything in the next couple cycles does the LP do do we have any does the LP have anybody um, looking into running for city council? Ah. Uh... Let's see. If so, find them and send them my way. I will absolutely right. <laughs> do my best to run. Because I mean, I'm I'm not a city resident, so for me personally, it's not it's it's indirect. I mean, my businesses are in the city, so I don't feel like I'm out of place injecting myself into city politics. But my residence and me personally as a county resident is not on that. So 
I'm working my way through the commission right now. Um, and so I fo- I focus more on county level politics just because it's technically in my purview. It's my, it's not, I'm not just a media person on that. It's actually my governing body that I get to interact with. Um, so again, um, any, 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 anything coming up in the city of 20 to 22, or is it 21 or 22? Is it, it's not this year, it's next year. Uh, city is odd years, counties even years. Okay, so right? it is this year. So we do have a, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Matt Shears from the Democratic Party was telling me about it. Um, that they're starting to work. They're doing their restructuring. They're, they're, uh, they're doing their internal restructuring and the GOP is doing their internal restructuring right now. And then it's going to be, I think March is when petitions are due and then it's game on until the November. Yeah, you're right. It is this year. So again, so we do, we don't have anybody officially got anybody working on. If you can break the um, rules, I'll run as a libertarian in the city council race, even though I'm not technically allowed to run. (laughs) I'd like to, I, I need a, see what's going to happen i've been working from home for eight months that's and then i take care of a couple of people and yeah you know el- elderly grandma and, yeah but uh well i'm i, don't I'm, know. I myself zach have... out zach yeah. out yeah he's he's run for uh like a state seat a couple of times so gotcha i mean i just don't i mean i don't know like I, i'm one of my things personally is like i'm upside down i think on the way i see politics i want um like i think i think my my general party alliances shift on which level of government we're talking about like i think if we're on if we're on federal government i'm full on i'm at least a minarchist if not almost an anarchist federally but locally i'm a little bit more of probably probably a little more of a democrat locally i don't i i I, but because i think that's where the power should lie if we're going to have it, it should be here. Like my, my new standard question, whenever I have any politician in here, any of my county commissioners have had in here, um, next time I have anybody else on here, it's how do we get the federal and state government out of our business? That's mm-hmm. always my, that's always going to be a question I'm going to keep asking everybody. It's like, it's especially the federal one. So it's, um, you know, it's like the, this whole Trump phenomenon, which was fantastically fun to watch. Terrible, really terrible to have to be a part of. I would love to have been a Canadian through the last four years and been able to been able to watch it, but not be a part of it. Um, you know, it's just it, to me, and I, and I appreciate I appreciate Trump for it. I appreciate Trump for breaking the whole thing down about how stupid it is. And I think that's the opening for the LP on the federal level is like this thing is dumb and we suck at it. So we need to minimize ourselves and get out of the way and just get to core basic two or three things that we do as a federal government and let you states deal with your own shit and then further than that we're going to encourage you states to just kind of deal with some broad stuff and then let your locals really 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 handle your business because that's how i think it should be personally and that's what i'm that that's kind of the general that i'm pushing for because i want like the, the only reason i do the show like this part like the, the the main reason was it was a good excuse to get my buddies to come over and drink and and hang out um and then they realized that was my game and they disappeared um, and so I started going to this side of it where I'm, where it's, it turned into all politics and what, but it's one of the things we talk about as a group all the time. We've talked about it for 15 years, hanging out at the bar, doing whatever we're doing is that local politics is everything, everything you deal with on the day to day, the stupid little stuff or your drive from to and from work. Um, the, the, the majority of your interaction is going to be with local government. So yeah. why is there no attention? You know, the, like, if I wasn't doing this show right now, I wouldn't know who my commissioner was. Um, you know, I would have gone into the November election not knowing who I was choosing between um, for my commission seats. Um, I wouldn't have known what the um, the law director conversation was. I would like we had to go over that five times on the show to make sure we understood what that law director vote was. Um, yeah. You know, I wouldn't have known half the people at play if I didn't start doing this show because. I don't have access to that information. The right. local local media sucks, uh, and I hate them for it. And I decided that in my basement with my kids and some kids hanging out with them, I'm going to talk to people and try to figure out how to get a more palatable, real world person version of what's going on in politics. Mm-hmm. And I'm not that good at the details, and I'm not going to be that good at the details. And I enjoy that part of it. Um, 
but the broad picture stuff, I think we got, we've got a lot of work to do to get people to care again. Um, and I, but I think Trump started that ball. I think it's, we have two ways to go here. Either it all falls apart or we're like, Oh, we need to pay attention to what's going on. Cause if we're not paying attention, we get another thing like this. Not that Biden's any better, but, um, <laughs> You know, I don't know. It's just, it's so easy. That's, that's the fun part about being a libertarian. It's so easy to shit on everybody and it's fun. <laughs> but at the same time you get shit on by everybody else and there's more of them than there are of us. So it's a little bit lopsided than that. Cause I don't know, like it's fun. Like I've I want, some of my favorite shows we've done so far. I've had the, 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 the GOP and the democratic chairs in here together and we've sat down all three of us and talked about stuff. And, uh, next awesome. time we do it, I'll next, next time I do it, I'll get you in here and we'll figure out how to, how, all three parties look at it and um you know since it's my show they have to for i'll force them to respect the libertarian party at least for the moment um <laughs> yeah so i don't i, I don't like I, I again i i don't run format i don't have a big list of questions i know there's some stuff we talked about um i think one of the things that i think one of the things that we as a party could push i think we could push legalization because i think everybody knows it's a reality it's an eventuality yeah, it's, it's not an if it's it's not an if it's when and for me personally i i i hate the idea i don't know how long have you lived in knox county knoxville uh 10 years okay yeah, i moved up here from middle tennessee uh, okay so, well so you're in tennessee either way so you remember when the lottery came in yep do you remember why the lottery came in education well sort of but why we actually finally <laughs> why we actually brought the lottery in i don't i if i recall correctly i don't remember who it was but there was a house rep that was like, hey, you guys realize how much money Tennesseans are spending in Kentucky, Georgia, oh, North yeah. Carolina, Alabama on lottery tickets? And they're like, I mean, I don't know. And he threw some number out. It's like, that's how much money we could be collecting to spend on whatever we want to spend on. And then they chose education, which they, and they still fucked it up. It should have been lower <laughs> education. We don't need more idiots going to college. We need more non idiots graduating high school. Anyway, that's a side soapbox for me. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm afraid that's what we're going to do with pot. You know that Kentucky is going to go legal, North Carolina is going to go legal, Georgia is going to go. I think Georgia already did. Um, I think Kentucky already did, or Illinois already did. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's Virginia is about to right, and you know Alabama will, and like it's like you know we can we we can play this buckle of the Bible Belt thing as long as we want to, but we're just gonna if we're just gonna be the last of the game, then we lose all the the early entry bonus. Mm -hmm. You know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna it's not gonna be that we get all the pot tourism until everybody else goes legal. Like, you know, Colorado's killing it with that part. You know, people people are, it's like going to Mecca. <laughs> you know, and it, which, I mean, which it is. Have you been to a dispensary out in one of those places? Uh, no, no. I don't smoke. I never have. I, I, I've i tried, and it, I just, it doesn't work for me. I get sick. Like, I get physically ill. I throw up all over the place. <laughs> it's awful. Um, but, like, I went with some buddies, and we were up in Colorado, and it's like, I mean, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't even know what to compare it to. It's like, I mean, if you were a pot smoker, it'd be like going into Victoria's Secret when you're 17 as a dude. <laughs> like everything is just like the whole time. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I, I, again, I, I, what's it's what's so frustrating to me about the party? I don't know how to. I don't. It's just it seems so logical to me, and I don't like. I can't figure out how I'm missing it. Like how I'm missing being able to articulate it and get people across the across the line to understand what the actual principles of the party are and what it actually means. Um, so I don't know, help me out, help me, help, help me with argument points. Like, uh, you know, again, like I think one of the big things is, is people like to dismiss others and they assume everybody else is stupid. And so when you pitch them the idea of, well, you trust yourself, then why don't you trust them to make their own decision? You know, cause I mean, I got, I, I mean, like, like he's one of my best friends on the planet and like I pinned him on a gun control thing. And cause we were talking about Biden's, one of Biden's gun control stances pre-election, um, and it was like a max number of guns per year or something like that. And he's like, I don't like that. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, I don't, I mean, you know, if I want to buy 20 guns tomorrow, I'm going to buy 20 guns tomorrow. I was like, I agree. He's like, yeah, but there's some people that, that shouldn't buy 20 guns tomorrow. It's like, well, if you think you're capable of making that decision, why isn't that other person make, capable of making that decision? Well, there's some bad people out there. Well, sure. But <laughs> should those bad people take your ability away? No. That's well, then how do we fix this? Right. Uh, <laughs> Again, I like I. Well, it seems I so natural I, to me. That's the problem. It seems that's that's probably the real problem. Is it seems so natural to me that it's like explaining what the sun is to a ten year old. It's the sun. It's the thing up in the sky. 
it's mm. easy. And since it's easy, it's, since it feels so easy to me, I can't, I can't break it down into a non-believer's viewpoint. Mm. Um, so anyway, I interrupted. Go ahead. No, I was, I, th- I think of a quote by Buckminster Fuller, where he's, he's talking about, um, or even Bruce Lee, you know, we're, we're so, we're so busy focusing on how do we change the current model? When the answer is you, you build a new model and it makes the old one obsolete. Right. You know, we, you know, it goes back to earlier when I mentioned if, if we're, if we can amplify the people's voice, you know, if if you can connect with someone on, on a, a common ground and, and you share, you know, your own story and, and you show them, okay, we're looking for solutions. We're, we're, we're about, you know, we're, we're designed. I mean, it's like intimately human to want to solve problems. We go looking for trouble and looking for problems because we want to, we, we get a kick out of it. We get a high off of it. We get um, satisfaction whether it's a personal level or, or we've expanded our, uh, you know, into groups and communities, into neighborhoods, cities, you know, all the way up to a national consensus. If you, if you can take away that apprehension from, a, you know, put a person at ease, um, In a, in a way, the party labels are, are a hindrance right. to the mess to the message. You know, we're trying to we're trying to crowdsource um, solutions. You know, we want it's like the sharing economy, or, or you know, so many so many new models are coming along, and, and whether it's you know homeschooling is changing public schools, um, Uber and 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 Amazon have changed you know, how, how things are delivered or even medicine. Um, if you change the model and, and you prove it in, in a small, uh, what do you call it? In, in a micro, like a micro economy or a right. micro. Yeah. 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 Then, then you can scale it up. You know, I, I work in it and, and we'll, we'll see, you know, we find this little snip of code we can run this script and, and then it saves so much money, so much time. And now the client's happy, the customer, the, the contract, you know, the, and, and then the agency and it all trickles down. But with, with like libertarians, we're, we're always preaching grassroots, you know, let, let's have bottom up governance. Right. And, and the more, the more we empower people and, and, and show them, how much better off they're going to be by taking responsibility and having, I mean, it's like showing a five-year-old at first they don't want structure, but they really do crave it. Right. It's, it's a human, it's, it's in, in dude or, or what it's, what do you call it? It's built into us. Right. We, we want some kind of organization and structure. And in, if we start seeing, the improvements, you know, small improvements, more often than it snowballs. Um, you know, a, a lot of times people are shooting, and, and we're guilty of this. We'll try to shoot for the moon. You know, whether it's you'll hear this from Republicans and Democrats all the time. Why are y'all libertarians running for president? You know, and we're y'all never run for anything else, but. But we do. I mean, we're getting right. people elected at local and right. state levels every day. Yeah, and I mean, think, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I, I, right. Well, I, I, I mean, uh, this is a. I've already got in trouble for this, and I'll do it again. I guess. Um, you know, we made it, it's it. It was such a big deal that Kamala Harris is vice president. Mm-hmm. Identifies as female, born as female. <laughs> Jamaican slash African slash Indian slash Asian um, yeah. vice president. 
Which is good. It's 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 a big deal. I mean, uh, like I saw a really good graphic on it where they had a, like a picture, like a, a collage of all the vice presidents, and they had circled the different ones on when different things where person that fell under the subgroup that she falls under had access to different X, Y, and Z. And it was, it was, it was, it was a pretty impactful. And so it's a big fucking deal. I made an issue. I made an issue of like, it annoys me and it's not, and it was kind of asshole of me or whatever, but it annoys me that it, it's that they made such a big deal out of it during the inauguration. But in hindsight, it is a big deal. Um, and I think that's the thing with libertarians why we run for president is that that's the big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to talk about, you know, if we're going to talk about, it's a big deal that we have a female black Asian vice president, well, it'd be a big fucking deal if we had a libertarian president. And for yeah. all those other people that actually, because, you know, like that's always the thing I would like. That's to me, that's the hard thing is like I, I, I'm hanging out, talking to my friends, doing this, that and the other. They're all libertarians. Like they all actually are libertarians. They just don't get it yet. They don't understand like the the phrasing and the structure of what libertarianism is. So they don't get it. And so to have a libertarian president would be like, oh, OK, this thing's a real thing. So this can go functionally at all levels and we can do that thing. And so if like, if it's a big deal to have a black female Asian vice president, then it'd be a big deal to have a libertarian president period, whatever, you know, whatever gender race norm bullshit side (laughs) goes with that. That's not the, that's not the important part, but to, to, to show the example to, for all those little young libertarians out there, they have, they could see that they can be president too, just like all apparent, like every, (laughs) <laughs> oh god i need to shut up uh like <laughs> just like every asian black female now knows that they are capable of becoming vice president because kamala harris did it <laughs> you know not that she deserved to do it at all i mean that's the i mean that's the problem i can't remember who it, it's it's somebody smart quote it's like you know the it's the 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 most narcissistic mediocre people you're ever going to meet in your life are politicians yeah. You know, the, all they care about is me, 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 me. But as far as leadership goes, they're, yeah, you know, and their only thing in leadership is whatever goes back to making me look good. Um, you know, and so, and that's what sucks about it. Cause it's like, you know, cause I shit all over uh, Hillary Clinton when she was running. Um, you know, and it's just like, it's not, a, it's not about the her part. I don't care about the her part. It's mm-hmm. that she's a terrible fucking person and doesn't need to be yeah. the president of the United States. You know, Donald Trump for me, like I argued for Donald Trump, even though I voted for uh, um, Gary Johnson and I was planning on voting for Gary Johnson the whole time. But of the two, I preferred Trump just because I didn't want a serial killer in the presidency. We ended up getting one anyway, but that's how (laughs) every president ends up being a serial killer on some level, I guess. But anyway, um, like I think that's the problem is that we we, um, like, you know, I mean, to, 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 you know, we had we had a mosh in the in, in the house. Um, but as far as high level, like aspire, uh, you know, a libertarian to aspire to for me, uh, all we've got, I mean, we got Glenn Jacobs, even though he's not, he's a, he's a Republican here. And that, that's something that I take issue with. Um, and I joked about that in the intro. It's like, well, we have a libertarian Republican County mayor. How does that work? You know, and especially going back again, I'm district 18. I got to watch this whole Ostermanis debacle unfold. But we got a guy who's a dues paying libertarian running as a Republican in the county, and the party was good with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's the, the vehicle. He, he needed a vehicle to right, and that's, crash but, the gate. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> because, you know, and, and, and I, I flat asked Eddie about it when early in the process, first time I interviewed him, I flat asked him, I was like, why don't you run as an independent? Mm hmm. You know, and he did a good job of not answering the question because the right answer is I don't have a chance. There, I can't, I can't win. You know, and it's it's Eddie Manis in Knoxville. Like Eddie Manis is probably top fifteen Knoxville Knoxvillians, probably. You know, as far as like name recognition, community. He's been here. He does a lot of good stuff. He's a great dude. I didn't even know he was gay until after he got elected. Me too. Yeah, I mean, I like I had no idea that was a thing because you know what? I didn't care. Yeah. I don't fucking care who he's sleeping with. That doesn't matter to me. But, you know, like, um, you know, so, like, I feel like he could have broke the mold. I feel like um, for libertarians especially, Glenn Jacobs screwed the pooch on the Board of Health thing. I mean, everything he really did. I think he what he should have done, and I was talking to on my Biggs episode we were talking about with Justin, uh, with Justin Biggs, is, mm-hmm. is even though on principle he should have voted against everything the Board of Health is doing, but to clarify his point and why the board of health shouldn't exist, he should have voted with them, and then publicly came out and said this is wrong. 
to show the problem correctly because instead he was like you're voting against health and stuff so we don't listen to you it should have been like well i voted with health because i think it is the right thing to do but i don't feel like it should exist and i think he screwed that up i think he could i think this whole board of health thing could have gone much better as far as clarifying what the actual issue is because i don't know how much you've paid attention to it i actually went and sat through a nine-hour meeting for the commission trying to figure it out and it's literally again the libertarian part makes total sense um it's very simple for the libertarian mindset it's that you are an adult you can make your own decisions do so um so what are we doing uh you know what is like you know again it's it's it it, it turned into the you want to kill your grandma or um or you know, it's it's it was the mask anti mask. It turned into that thing, which it, which I think I think Mayor Jacobs could have much more concisely and clearly illustrated what the problem is. Is that we have a non elected body who's making functional decisions legally about your life, and that is not right. You know, it, whether libertarian or not, that is not right. That it should be something that our commission, that your elected officials do, that somebody who is responsible to you as a voter has to answer for. But instead, it became an anti-masker argument, and and that, and I think that's where the wheels fell off this whole thing right at the beginning. Yeah, I don't know. I'm aware of several, you know, like not lobbying groups, but more uh, activist groups and and think tanks that have, you know, released, uh, you know, press releases and and these email campaigns and call your commissioners, call your councilman kind of campaigns. And those have been very effective to uh, maybe more effective than the protests in person down there at the uh, city county building. But, you know, everyone has their strategy. I just, I, I mean, I, like I said, I think the issue, I, I don't, I, I don't think if I didn't, pound head against the actually sitting through meetings myself and talking to commissioners myself. I don't think I would have got the clear picture of it. Cause I, cause the local media is not covering it correctly either. Nobody, mm. I haven't heard anybody locally media wise say, say what the actual issue at play is. And that's what bothers me. Cause the actual issue at play is the non-elected people are making legal decisions about how you're allowed to live your life. You know, and again, the libertarians like, well, even the elected officials shouldn't really have a good, strong push on that anyway. But at least if we're going to play this, we're going to vote and the voting people make decisions and blah, 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 blah. It, you know, I get it that you have to you have to subset stuff out. You have people that are more expert in uh, in, in a subject than than, uh, you know, a commissioner is not going to be um, fully functionally aware of all the different intricacies of a certain so- topic. And that we should have boards that exist to educate on said things, but when uh, at the end of the day, it does not make sense to me that a non-elected body does it, ever. I can't yeah. think of I can't think of a situation where I'm going to say that makes sense. And I get it, you know, because the the you know I had Larson, the the chair of the county commission, I had him on. It's like, you know, we need to have we need to make it not political. That's like I agree, but that's your fault as a politician for turning it political, not. My fault is a constituent that you can't do your job correctly and we have to subset it out to somebody else. So yeah. how do we fix this? You know, and, and, and again, I, and, and I think the real, real thing is that is all the, the pandemic just showed the problem that already existed for so long that nobody paid attention to, yeah. which I guess is a good thing that the board of health wasn't overstepping their bounds sooner. Cause they could have, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I want to be a libertarian. I really want to be a libertarian. I just can't, I can't figure the party out at this point. That's my problem. The part there, the, and I guess it's natural for any party. There's going to be the infight, and there's going to be the the subsets and the specifics that different groups um, advocate for. But I, like, I, I don't know. I feel like the 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 libertarian party is a couple of mini parties that can't line up to make one strong party. And that's why we can't get a real strong push publicly. Well, not to, I mean, plus the duopoly doing what it does. 
Um, and so to not have one simple unified basic set of structures that we can move forward on as a party because we already have enough flack from the outside. That's what, that's what frustrates me. And Dave Smith's the worst about it. I mean, he's, he is more than happy to shit on the party all day long. Um, and I see it both ways. Like I see it both ways is that, you know, they need to do it right. If they're not going to do it right, then they're not the party that I want to be a part of. But at the same time, it's like, we just need some sort of consistency and that's what's lacking. Um, I agree. Yeah, and that that brings me to, uh, you know, then in February on uh, Sunday the twenty first, we're having our the LPTN state convention in uh, Wilson County. That's coming up. We'll we'll be. Is that gonna be a virtual uh, or is that gonna be an in person event? How's that gonna work? Uh, both. Yep. Both. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, is there how? What's the best way to get to that? As far as information, oh, right or off information. Forty. Yeah, it's 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 an exit right off of I forty, and then like quarter mile down the street on the right. Gotcha. What's a, is there is there a website or anything that is at the LPTN TNLP yeah. LPTN dot com dot org dot dot org. Yep. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes too for those interested. Um, yeah, we'll have, we're having we're having a course executive committee. Um, I think the the leadership. Some some new uh, people or candidates are running for that those offices, and then uh, I think we have about fourteen bylaw propositions. Um, some of those there's there's uh, some requests for new new positions and changing the I guess the the role and the scope of some of the other like regional positions and how how the uh, county chairs are chosen or retained and, uh, or appointed and a lot of definition changes and, but a lot of fun with uh, little, little deets and uh, all the all the fun little detail side so um, rolling out a lot of new things again like I said I, I'm I will I right. will not officially be a libertarian just because I need to hold on to some autonomy for the show's sake and um, if I ever do decide to run for office I want the ability to pick my party and not be stuck with the LP tag if I don't want it for the for the sake of. But <laughs> I mean, I think I, I, again, I think I think one of the biggest things that Trump did is he showed that the parties don't really stand for anything anyway. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that 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 I guess I get going back. I guess that's what frustrates me about the LP is like there is some clear basic stance that is the LP um, that gets gets lost in some of the shuffle. And I think that's one of the things that um, the LP needs to do better if they're going to, you know, like you said, like if you're going to change this, the, the, the metric, if you're going to change the uh, um, the system or you're not going to change the system, you're going to make the new system. You need to be the one that actually stands on the principle um, and, and moves forward. And and I think, you know, because I think one of the things I did, I, I was I was disappointed in Jorgensen. Um, I thought I, I thought some of the stuff that went on was 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 a little lacking. Um, cause I get like, I, I, to, 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 to do me again is like, I, I started this show as assuming that I'm normal and average, that I don't have anything special to say. It's just, I'm dumb enough to say it out loud. Um, and I think that if, if I'm right, that I am fairly average, it should be fairly easy. Cause I think wokeism is a problem. Um, I think there's, there, there's a positive to acknowledging that people are different and there's some special, whatever, two different people, but to the level that wokeism is, it's too much. And most people hate that. I think most people hate that. And I think that would have been an easy thing for the party to, to be the one to push against because the Republicans somehow, even though it was, it's built into them somehow still tried to coddle the wokeism and, and whatever. I don't know. Um, but, um, that's what I want to see. I want to see, I, I want to see a unified party, um, that has a, that has a direct aim. Um, and I think that's, you know, the, the, um, the event coming up, I think is one of those things that tries to clarify and, and, and narrow down some of the things and, and, and kind of get a unified vision. So if anybody wants to take a part of that, we'll, we'll send links and stuff like that if you want to do it. But I think the real thing is, is that the parties that, you know, the parties don't stand for anything anymore. Um, and, it's a cult of personality, right? It's just it's it's the person. Um, which again, I don't know what I want better from that. That's my problem personally. <laughs> is I want people. I don't I don't I don't care about the party. Like, cause I, 
like I've I've made little joke jabs and it, it I don't know how much it really functions locally, but you know like you know like because that's Biden's to me Biden's problem is he's just a a suit for a D, you know he's just a he he's just a a a, a zombie of D ness and 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 I don't know my assumption is that the party is going to do what they want with him and and he's going to function within the party rules because the actual mm-hmm. puppeteer is going to play his game. I was about to say, yeah, I haven't heard that in a long time, but it's, I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, because I mean, that was the that was why Trump was so awful. Trump was so awful because he there was no strings attached. There was no strings. Yep. There was nobody actually behind the scenes pulling the strings. It was just one actual straight up asshole instead of a mm-hmm. guy that looks nice and pretends to be nice and all that kind of shit with the assholes behind the curtains pulling the strings. <laughs> and that's why. I, and and again, I, like I love Trump for that. Like I'm gonna get shit for saying it out loud, but I love Trump for that. Trump showed. Trump was Trump is as Trump is as is the worst politician and the best politician at the same time. He's the worst in that he's too stupid to not run his mouth about things that the part that that politics is. He's going to say it out loud and everybody's going to go, "You don't say that out loud." Everybody knows it, but you don't say it out loud. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, he knew how to push the buttons and play the game and get the media doing the things and getting um, getting the reaction and being able to fight the reaction to the stupid thing he said in the first place and making them the enemy, even though they technically were reacting to the enemy thing that he did and shit like that. He's I, 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 he's either he's either an idiot savant or he's full on 4D chess. I don't know which one, I still um, don't. you know, and and but but what he really, 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 really did is he showed how stupid the parties are. There's no consistency. Nobody gives a shit about anything unless it serves their purpose. In 2016, this election was a fraud. All the Democrats were screaming about it. In 2020, now it's Trump screaming about it. And all the Democrats are like, you can't say that. This election is perfect. And it's like, well, it wasn't, and it is, and it is, and it wasn't. <laughs> and you and I are sitting here going, what the fuck is going on? Who are these people? What are they doing? Do they live on the same planet that we do? Mm-hmm. And 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 it, but yet it's like, well, you can't vote for the libertarian because if you vote for the libertarian, that's a vote for Trump. Or if it's a Trump supporter, if you vote for the libertarian, it's a vote for Biden. It's like, well, you know, I'm going to vote my conscience and I'm going to vote for somebody that I actually thinks going to do something that should be done instead of not that guy. That's the problem with me. And like, I've gotten, into, I've gotten into so many arguments since the election of of did did 80 million people vote for biden or did 80 million people not vote for trump and what is the ratio in there because there's there's <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a, it's a significant and important thing to talk about because i would imagine that 60 million of the 80 million people that voted for biden voted for not trump mm-hmm. so that means that whatever biden thinks he's supposed to be doing because he got he won the election isn't what we want it's just we didn't want more of that. And again, yeah. it's just one of those things I don't know how to rectify and I don't know how to justify. Um, and I don't even know how to argue. You know, it's easy to say we need third parties, and, but, you know, I, I don't know. It's just it's hard to it, it's hard to move. It's hard to move the conversation forward because it's so it seems like we get it gets it's so uh, it's so a B that at some point the not a becomes more important than C. Does that make sense? Right, right. You know, even in even in states like Maine, who are you know dabbling on a you know ranked choice voting or approval voting, new systems of you know electing people. It's yeah, I, I, I and I like the ranked choice. I think it's um, I think it opens it up a little bit. Um, I like um, yeah, I kind of like what Georgia. I think whatever the Georgia thing was, you know, nobody nobody won the majority of the votes. Mm. Um, so we dump the lowest one and we do it again, but I don't know. Get I can see the, and that gets rid of primaries, right? Essentially, but I, I, I can see that being, I mean, if you can sell it, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, and the problem with that one too, is that the, the way the Georgia one, the way the Georgia one rolled out, it's like, okay, that's a good logical system. But I mean, I, I, I haven't seen the number, but I'm assuming it's astronomical how much was spent in that Georgia runoff. Mm -hmm. Um, with both parties going down there. I mean, uh, Trump and Biden and Pelosi and McConnell and 
<laughs> Kamala and Pence. I, I mean, and the the whole laundry list of everybody who's important in either party's name spent a ton of time in Georgia between November and January first, or January third, or whenever that uh, that runoff was. And it's like, man, I mean, that. And again, the problem is, is that I'm in Knoxville. What does Georgia have to do with me? Yep. Like, and and how? It, why is why are these two people in Georgia so important that? my party chair, my Tennessee state party chairs of, um, of different parties. I mean, what is it? Marsha Blackburn went down to Georgia and did a bunch of shit and, (laughs) you know, some other people, I don't know who all, but anyway, Marsha, fuck, Marsha is a whole nother animal. Um, all right. So that that brings me up to, uh, this is, this has become a serious, important question within my group of, uh, the podcast crew. Um, do you think a home economics degree, if you go to, if you go to college and get a degree in home economics, that still counts as a college degree. Well, yeah, <laughs> so that's what I said too. All right, good. Well, but you're a libertarian, so he's not going to take your word anyway. So, but one of the guys in the show, like we all hate Marsha Blackburn. We should hate Marsha Blackburn. Everybody should hate Marsha Blackburn. Um, she's got a podcast. If you've checked it out, and check. I out. tried. I tried because I I was hoping that it had substance, and it has none. It's literally. I mean, it's all her talking to other politicians, but like, uh, it's like she's on her fifth episode now, I think, and uh, all the episodes have bar- so far have been uh, freshman senators that just got elected, and just like little mini softball bios and how'd you get into <laughs> politics? Where'd you come from? Oh, and your family's this. Oh, God's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they're fifteen, twenty minute episodes. <laughs> they're awful. I was like, I was listening to. It. I was like, I want some substance. Cool. Marsha Blackburn. She's my state senator. She's doing a podcast. I think that's worth listening to. No, it's not. It's awful. It's terrible. It doesn't tell you anything. We're not talking politics. We're not talking about the next bill that's coming up. We're not talking about the next time we're going to put, we're going to call it a COVID bill, but it's really a big business and military bill. But we're going to talk about where Julie came from when she decided to run for senator in the state of Maine or whatever the fuck it is. (laughs) And it's like, this is worth, this is a waste of time. I'm paying you, you're, you're, I'm paying you as a senator to do more important shit than this. But this is what she does with her free time, I guess. So I don't know, man. I don't know. What do we got? Give me something. Can we get something to get excited about. Uh, that, that's the, I want some, uh, something or somebody to get excited about. Uh, let's see. Man. Oh, there's a dog. Dogs are exciting. Yeah, that's Deco the Greyhound. Hello, Deco the Greyhound. I had a good friend of mine. <laughs> um, whose parents were, were we, when I lived in Wisconsin, they went to the track all the time. They, they were just dog track in the neighboring county in Kenosha. Everybody knows where Kenosha is now. I forget that. Um, I grew up in Racine, Wisconsin. <laughs> I grew up in Racine, Wisconsin, which is the county above Kenosha. Everybody knows where Kenosha is now because some cops killed a black guy in Kenosha and it's important. Um, uh, but there's a dog track in Kenosha and, and my friend's parents used to be, they used to love to go to the track and do track days. Um, and they ended up, I think it was three they adopted three whippets that retired from the track. And so I didn't know there was a difference, but there's two different dogs. There's greyhounds and there's whippets. Yeah. <laughs> Whipp- whippets are faster than greyhounds because um, they're smaller. Well, anyway, um, and so I remember that uh, one of those dogs got out. We let the dog out on accident and we had to chase that dog around the neighborhood. <laughs> it didn't go well. It didn't go well at all. So we let that dog tire out and then we found it laying in the ground and we had to carry it home. Anyway. Yep. We started that off with <laughs> with things that are exciting, and the history of uh, of racing dogs and me was apparently exciting to me. So um, I don't know. Like I said, like I want something exciting to look forward to. I want something like you know we got this. Uh, we got the uh, convention coming up, and that's exciting. Um, yep. That's a chance to get the structures together. Everybody else is doing their conventions and they're redoing structure, changing some bylaws, getting some things in. Um, you know, I'm hopeful on the ballot access thing. I think. Um, I think that's a doable thing and it, it, it shouldn't be a hard thing to get people behind. Yes, it should. Everybody that's going to vote on it doesn't want it. <clears throat> um, yeah, we have a lot more sponsors for it or co-sponsors this time around. And, um, uh, what's it called? That fiscal note thing. I don't think it's going to be a, uh, an issue this time around. Fuck them. Fuck their money. I don't give a shit about that. That's bullshit. Yep. That's an yep. un- that, and then, if you're going to make a fiscal <laughs> note, then you dump everybody else's help. Yeah. If it's if, if if the money is the problem, then no other party should get the money. That's stupid. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> and then uh, let's see. Yeah, the retention the retention um, total is drastically being reduced. 
in, in this new bill. Justin Cornett is the, the mastermind on it. What's the retention total? Tell me about it. I don't know uh, okay. So it used to be right now, right now we have to get, uh, what was it like 56,000 petition signatures. All right. For ballot access. Right. Sorry. Yeah. And then to, re- to retain that here, here's the rub. Um, it's a catch 22 because in the same year, like say it's a, um, a state office like governor or senator, we have to run as, as an LP party, have to run a candidate the same year that we get the access. So we, we would have to know in advance with 100% certainty that we're going to get access, that our bill will pass and already have someone running for, for an office. Uh, I, I, okay. And then it only, it's only good for two years. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just to, just to, for shits and giggles though, is you're pushing about, oh, fuck yeah, I guess you're right. I was going to say, just grab some random independent that wants to run for governor and be like, you're, you're a libertarian now. Yeah. And we have to get a certain percentage, you know, and this is the first. So that, that's where we run into, okay, well, we'd have to outspend the other two parties combined to get the recognition, to get enough votes to have the retention, you know, to hold us, you know, two to four years for the next election. Right. We'd have to get like, I think it's 5% and, you know, running, running a third party candidate in a, like for governor or Senator is even 5% is, is right, yeah, yeah, right. For sure. So that's why this, this new bill is going to, it's going to, it really leverages uh, a lot of things in our favor. And all know, right, so if, all right, so let's clarify the point here. So if um, if somebody's listening right now and they want to mm-hmm. try to assist in the process, they need to write or email or call their state legislator or yes. legislate legislators, and they need to say, "Hey, you need to say yes on what exactly." Oh, I can look it up real quick. <laughs> that's a tough one. Well, I'm just saying, like, let's say, you know, we need ballot access. It's a ballot access. Um, we need ballot access. We need more candidates. We need. I, God, I. While you're looking that up, I'm going to rant for a second because it's like, I, how does, you know, if I'm Becky Massey, what reason could I possibly imagine that I'm going to say yes to having one more person to have to fight against? Especially as libertarians, because libertarians usually pull more from Republicans than Democrats, even though that's not, that shouldn't be true, but it's traditionally true. If I'm Becky Massey, I'm like, nah, I don't really see a good thing for that in me. It's got to be something, it's, it, it's got to be that enough people say, hey, you have to do this, period. Because I'll vote for you if it's between you and a Democrat, but if you don't pass this, I'm not voting for you, period. That's the only way we get it through. I'm trying to th- I'm trying to think of how like I'm trying to think of how to word that to a person who has zero interest in really doing that to make it land. Mm-hmm. So so for those listening out there, it's got to be like, hey Becky, you need to vote for this. It's important that we have options on who to vote for. Mm-hmm. And although this goes against your own best interests. You have to pass this or we won't vote for you, period. That's the only way I can think of to say that. Makes sense. Okay. I'm on the Tennessee General Assembly legislation legislative uh, website searching for the bill. Okay. While you're, as you continue to search, <laughs> the, um, the other one that Becky is, has introduced, you need to say – Keep your fucking drones on the ground. It's none of your goddamn business. <laughs> Unless it's, a, I don't know. I guess that's the problem with me. Is like if it's over public space, like if we're out, if like if uh, if there's an event going on World's Fair, and the police want to use drones to monitor that, I don't like it, but I'm not that upset about it. But right. if, if it, when it crosses into private land, is where I, where I take issue. If we're gonna if if we're gonna allow public land to exist, then public land should be dealt with as the public needs it. And then I'm going to have to deal with the consequences of that. So I'm going to, yeah. So on the um, SB 
Um, fuck, I got to find it again, guys. I'm sorry. While he's looking for things, I'm going to look for things. This is exciting, exciting listening for everybody. Um, uh, two people searching the internet on their own. Um, do, 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 do. It is um, SB0258, letting law enforcement use drones in places. That one you need to reach out and you need to be like, let's clarify the point. Um, when and where are they allowed to do this? If it has anything to do with private property, then it needs to fuck off. Um, and then while I'm here and you're continuing to look, um, it's uh, for all Tennessee. It is a nonprofit, and they're pushing the some libertarian agenda stuff. That's Josh yep. Eagle. Though he's, is he officially the former chair? Or is he still the chair? And that's what you're gonna. He's getting kicked out here. Right, right. He's yeah, retiring he's, in uh, the next one. Yep. Yep. Do 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 do. Um, yeah, for yeah. all Tennessee on Facebook, you can check them out. Yeah, um, Justin Cornett was the the other mastermind on that one. Do 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 do. Uh, let's see. Validex. Go to our site. I bet it's on there. But yeah, um, yeah, the signatures. The Texas, California, and Tennessee have the highest number of individuals that need to petition. Yeah, petition to to get on to uh, to to add parties to whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's SB 260, which is the bill to seek to abolish $350 bond innocent property owners pay when trying to reclaim property. That's bullshit. You shouldn't have to pay to get your own shit back when it's stolen from you, regardless of who stole it from you, including the state. Um, anyway, I don't know. That's- okay, so here's here's one. Of, here's the uh, yeah the bills. The, okay. For- Lobbying for ballot access reform bill. So we got House Bill two five eight zero. Okay. And Senate Bill two five three zero. That was as of March of twenty twenty. Um, I think Justin Cornett has probably revised it and re. You know they're they're bringing it, it, the wording may have been updated. Um, I don't know if the bill numbers have changed. I don't think so. But it was like on summer study and then in the fall um, because of pandemic, non, all that going on, uh, it didn't, it didn't get its, um, it didn't get tabling right. through all the committees. Here's but, one for me. And, and, and you, this, yeah. this, this needs to push through. I want 18. Or, uh, I want a number. I want just a fixed number for all things adult. Um, so yeah, my day job is in the quote tobacco industry. I, I own a vape shop, um, uh, state of Tennessee federal or FDA made it 21 back over the summer. State of Tennessee put it into place here at the beginning of the year. I don't give a shit. Pick a number. If you're an adult, you're an adult. If you're not an adult, you're not an adult. I don't care what it is. It needs to be universal across the board. It drives me fucking crazy. If you're old enough to go to war, if you're old enough to take on, incalculable amount of debt if you're old mm-hmm. enough to be tried as an adult and sentenced as an adult then you should be able to smoke drink and do drugs as much as you fucking want as long as you're not harming others in the process that that pisses me off to no end um so that's a new one get that uh i'll 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 i'll, I'll start reaching out and pushing that thing i don't care what it is it just needs to pick a number if you're 18 if, if you're an adult at 18 if you're allowed to, uh, whatever it is, if I don't know, if you're if you're an adult, you're an adult. If you're not, you're not. There's no, if, if it's it's an arbitrary number, no matter what number we pick. But let's pick one and make it universal. It drives me fucking crazy. Other than the car rental one, because that's private companies saying, well, you got to be 25 to rent a car. But that's you know that's not a legal thing. That's an insurance thing. And there's a private companies doing what private companies does. And I'll let that one go. Um, so anyway, I, <clears throat> I interrupted. So we've got um, ballot access. Uh, we've got crazy drones flying. We've got criminal uh, justice reform, criminal justice reform, uh, civil asset forfeiture, forfeiture. Um, uh, jury nullification, jury nullification. There's another big one. That's uh, that's a party issue. Um, yep. you know, and uh, 
which is a weird one. It's 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 a fully informed jury is the more right because it, jury nullification is a thing that exists. It's yeah. just that nobody tells anybody, and it, you know, you're a jury, you're a normal person, uh, and <laughs> normal people don't know that you're allowed to say, yeah, he's guilty, but that shouldn't be a crime, so he's innocent. So essentially, I mean, the, that's the lazy way to put it. It's that you're allowed to, as a juror, to say, yes, I believe he is guilty, but I do not believe that should be a crime, so I am going to say not guilty because I have to. Um, which pretty much in, in the current state of things, you'll just get kicked off the jury. You know, So if you want to get out of jury duty, say you believe in jury nullification, and you'll get kicked off real quick. <laughs> Um, and so I don't know, is there official, is there, is there a specific thing that's working on that currently, or is that just kind of the, the premise that we're pushing forward to? Uh, let's see. That's just in our legislative agenda. Um, yeah, for the LPTN and, uh, we'll be organizing some days on the Hill, you know, when, when they start opening the session, um, in the spring. Okay. So is there a calendar out there that that because uh, I mean I'm sure there is I'm sure the state has a calendar when they're doing different shit, um, which I probably should look up. But you know, like I told you, I'm lazy and I don't. Um, so I, and again, I, I, again to me, this it's it's about getting involved. Get involved and speak speak your truth, whatever the fuck it is, whether it's mine or or not. Make it a point to talk to whomever about how you feel on a certain thing. Do it respectfully. Well, uh, maybe not respectfully, but at least death threats are bad. We all agree that death threats are bad. That is against the non-aggression principle, and you should be punished for it. Um, there's shit going on locally with the Board of Health and stuff like that. I really hate that. It really pisses me off that I can't have, I can't get a conversation with certain people in the county commission right now because they don't want to get another death threat because they're going to speak what they want to speak because that's what I force out of people. But they, they've been getting death threats for doing what they're doing. And that's fucked up. And anybody out there that's doing it needs to get fucked up for it. But, um, you know, speak your piece. Be, be, be honest and direct and mostly respectful. You don't need to be nice. But you need to at least, I don't know, like, like, that's one of those things. It's like, we don't need to be nice. Um, I'm a, I've, I've, I've turned into a big Jimmy Dore fan. You listen to Jimmy Dore at all? Oh, I haven't heard of him. Jimmy Dore, he's a comedian, podcaster. Um, his podcast, he's a full-on progressive. He's a Bernie bro if there's ever been a Bernie bro. And so <laughs> functionally, core value things, I don't agree with him at all. But he puts on a – he's very smart. He knows what he's talking about. He's very clear about it. Um, and, you know, he will – he's super direct and specific. It's like we don't – being nice doesn't get anywhere. You know, being polite doesn't get anywhere. You got to be loud. You got to make them uncomfortable. You got to make them do. You can't just ask them to do. You got to make them do. But it's not make them do by saying, I'm going to kill you if you don't do it, because that's not okay. But you'd be like, I'm going to I'm gonna kill your career. I'm going to kill your, pol- your political career if you don't do it. I'm not going to vote for you again. I'm going to, you know, if you have, you know, um, you know, the, the people who are backing you are going to pay for what we're doing. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to put up with, you know, you doing this and pretend like I'm going to be nice about it. So, um, um, anyway, yeah, that thing, uh, we gotta, we gotta bridge that gap in, 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 in being forceful and direct, but not threatening, um, real quick, um, contacts, anything, any, anybody who's interested in libertarianism in, in Tennessee and wants to be a part of the party or wants to see, see how they can help where the action is, what's going on, what's a good contact, what's a good place to get in touch, um, how can they be active? Okay, so, well, at the state level, lp.org, uh, TN, tnlp.org. Okay. Uh, in East Tennessee, we got the etnlp.org. Okay. Um, that's I help uh, run that website, and uh, there's, of course, pages with a... Um, you know, our agendas are, uh, if you want to donate or if you want to volunteer, uh, just fill out the form. There's an online form in the web, web page. Um, and we'll, tnlp.org, you know, we'll etnlp.org. Yep. Okay. And uh, we'll get you connected with our, our 
uh, affiliates, our county chairs, whichever county you're from. And uh, then we have our regional coordinator for the ETNLP. Um, she oversees all the all the going ons for about, let's see, 10, 10 member counties uh, in East Tennessee. That's uh, Allison Burris. So she'd probably be the one, one, one of the first that'll reply. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So I'll put that in the notes, everybody. Um, you know, and, and the real, the, the, the real thing is just get active. You know, even if you're not a libertarian, get on the libertarian pages and check them out. See what the, see what the issues are. See how they stand on the issues. Get active, find people, talk to people, get your point across, make it so that it's unexcusable for the people elected to ignore you know, they may not agree with you on an issue. They may vote against what you are asking for when you when you do so. But make it so that you are heard and make it so that it's known that you are interacting with the system. Because I think that's what the main thing, the, the big thing that's the problem with the government in general right now is they are, um, they're capitalizing on your apathy. Yep. You don't care. You don't want to, you don't want to deal with it. You got work and you got kids and you got this, that, and the other, and you're not going to pay attention. So they're just going to do what they do and they're going to, they're going to get theirs done. They're going to take care of them and you might get something out of it, but their job is for you, not the other way around. They work for you. You don't work for them. And that's the big issue. And that's the thing that we need to get back into place moving forward. So any last words? Uh, let's see. Well, um, our state and local chapters, um, the Libertarian Party, we have a lot of resources for candidates who want to run local offices. I mean, if it's a dog catcher or codes enforcement or water department or, you know, cutting trees down, whatever, you right. know, parks and recreation. If you want resources right. to train you. If you want to run and you don't feel like you fit the parties, mm -hmm. try the LP out. They'll help if you and if the LP doesn't work, um, reach out to us and, and I'll get you in touch with Matthew Park. Matthew Park will do it too. Um, we've got we've got plenty of people that are interested in affecting change and changing the way the system works. Not just changing the way life is, but changing the way the system works for life. Um, so get active and get out there and do a part of it. I interrupted your last words. Anything else? I just. Uh... You know, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Non-aggression principle, private property rights, and property. outro music that I don't own. <laughs> Actually, I do. <laughs> I half own it. It's it's complicated. <laughs> anyway, we are almost in agreement, everybody. Brendan Hughes, um, TNLP, ETNLP. Uh, both of those are .org. Check them out. Um, Libertarian Party is is probably what most people are. That's the thing that drives me crazy. Is most of us are actually libertarians if you slow down and think about it. We're just too stuck with the duopoly, and they tell us that you're closer to this, and the other one is bad, and instead there is no other option. But there is. There's lots of other options. LP being one of them. Check it out. Get active. Be a part of what's going on in, in your community. And for at least my sake, I'm going to keep pushing on the fuck the federal government, get them out of your life, worry about your state and local and let's just push the let's just push the fed aside so almost agreement almost agreement at gmail.com facebook twitter youtube check us out like us share us do all that kind of shit that you're supposed to do help us get the word out because we are going to keep pushing local politics and in a real long-term format and, and and letting people actually say whole sentences instead of just soundbite after soundbite after soundbite but um that's our weekend uh you have a great night Good night, everybody. Thank you.